Today we are celebrating an anniversary. 10 years, Berlin Philharmonic and Gustavo Dudamel. Congratulations, first Thank of all. Thank you very much. 10 years. I'm almost a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you started so young. Yes. It was 2008 that you had your, your, your premiere with the orchestra. With the, orchestra exactly. the concert was at the Waldbühne, mm -hmm. but the first rehearsal was here. Exactly. Yeah. Do you remember, either here, this is backstage where you always wait before you go in. Mm -hmm. Can you remember what was going through your mind? <laughs> well, <laughs> Probably imagine. not repeatable in the camera. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you know, without the bad words. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it, it's a dream, you know, the Berlin Philharmonic. I remember running here around with the National Children Orchestra of Venezuela. And when I received the invitation to do this Latin American program. 2002, so that was quite a few years exactly. before. Exactly, yeah. and I play with the Children Orchestra some of the pieces that I conducted here. I remember, I was in the concert, uh, exactly. I remember. Exactly, and it was like pieces that the orchestra never played before. So it was a kind of a first time for all of us. And, and it was beautiful, it was like, a, I don't know, like a miracle in life. remember you sitting in all the rehearsals. We d there was just all this hair yeah. and looking over a score the a whole time. All the <laughs> time. And it was the best school. Yeah. You know, Maestro Abreu sent me here by a generous invitation of Simon and the orchestra. And I was like for three months here uh, learning in every rehearsal, sleeping there, resting. You slept, you used to have naps up there, there. There, And I knew when the rehearsal was starting because it was always a horn player warming up here. I wonder who that was. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was good if we'd known we would have played louder it, and woken you up. You know, I saw, no, but I woke up and I was resting. That was the moment to, to reflect about what, what I was seeing and then all the orchestra You didn't speak here. any English or German. Nothing, you, nothing. you spoke nada. Nada, nada. Um, I remember it was, we, we could just say good morning to you. Yes, and that was it. And you were always with Edickson in the corner. <laughs> completely, because also Edickson was helping me to, to, with the English. Yeah. You know, I have a conversation with Simon and, and Edickson was translating everything. Oh, wow. I remember playing uh, uh, in this piece by Kurtag that I came and I prepared the orchestra uh, for Simon. It was um, quasi una fantasia. And it, there are some instruments outside of, you know, in the, in the, in, in the audience. And I played the maracas, but I never got in because Simon explained to me something like, first of all, that is what I was listening. What's what this for? Whatever. And, and, and he said, Gustavo, that he was angry with me because I didn't, I, I didn't play because I didn't understood oh. when to play. So I learned many things in this way. <laughs> you worked with the academy first yeah. here. You came with the with the Ch children's orchestra of Venezuela. Of Venezuela, yes. Uh, so I remember yeah. that concert. You did about twenty five encores. <laughs> <laughs> you did not stop. Right, that was yeah. an amazing concert. Yes. And then you conducted the Academy, yes. um, which is a great experience for amazing, a young conductor because amazing. the players in the Academy are ah, such high quality. Completely, yeah. And then your, your debut, 2008, where you came out on stage, yeah. and then the Waldbühne that you chose pieces which we didn't know at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yes, you had exactly. to work very hard at getting us to play in this. But it was beautiful. It yeah. was a challenge, yeah. you know, when, when you have this kind of challenge. But I think it's all the time, you know, with whatever repertoire the orchestra is playing, mm -hmm. it's always a challenge. Of course, Latin American repertoire is about rhythms, it's about, uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, to put things together, to dance really together. When you have a Germanic repertoire, you can be more melodic and, and, and harmonic. In this case, it is very rhythmical, but it went beautifully, you know, it went beautifully. And imagine, after that, I have done how many Valbune concerts? Oh, at least three, three more think. after that, yeah. Uh, three, because yeah. I did the Tchaikovsky, the Tchaikovsky with Brahms, I did the, the Wagner with Schumann. <laughs> So 
so you moved your repertoire moved from South American repertoire mm -hmm. to to classic German repertoire, Russian yeah. music, and then how how did you decide what pieces to do with the orchestra? What what made you want to experiment with these things? Well, you know, it's always a challenge. I remember, you know, wanted to do, for example, a, a Strauss with the orchestra that we we did an album of Zarathustra, of the Teal, and, and Don Juan. And it was an, a, a, an, ad, an adventure, you know, to play with the orchestra that have recorded this with all of these great conductors. And Did you have recordings of the old days? Of I think, yes, yeah. yes. I, I, I love that, especially the old recordings. The really old, old ones. Old, yeah. old ones. And, um, and t again, it's a huge challenge. that when you come and you enjoy what you do. I love to, that, that the atmosphere is, you know, the, the, the energy is, is about happiness. It's about, you know, to enjoy what we are doing. And the orchestra is always, it has a character, of course. It has a unique, charac unique character, but at the same time, it has this kind of flexible thing that is always moving. You feel that when you are conducting. You don't have to talk to anyone to see the personality of the orchestra. And it's like a beautiful hurricane of feelings, of energy. And to play with that, especially doing Strauss, imagine, you know, Karajan was doing that thousands of times here with the orchestra. And still, even if the musicians that are playing now, they didn't play with Karajan, the spirit of that way to play is here still. So that is why it's always a challenge, but it's beautiful. We have done Beethoven, Mozart, Mahler, Schumann, Strauss, Schumann, Schumann, thousands of things. Now Shostakovich, Bernstein, we are doing. We have played modern music too with John Adams, Gubaidulina, we did. So I think it's a huge You've great been here a lot. A lot, 10 <laughs> but years, that's, a lot. But that's great. And you, you sense when you come, I hope, yeah. how much you're loved yeah, here. Yeah, no, completely. Because and it's not every conductor gets that treatment. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you feel also, you know, that, 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 that feeling. Because for me, the first thing when I conduct an orchestra is to, you know, to respect what the musician have, you know? And, and, and to listen, because it's very difficult when you are leading to, to listen to what the musicians give to you. Because in a way, you think you have to impose yourself. But you, you, you never impose, you propose, and then you guide listening and putting ideas together. If it cannot be radical in a way that you do things. Yes, in, in a period of the history, of art and, and, and social and everything, it was something very radical. It was the conductor that says imposing things. Right now, the level of the musicians in the orchestra is technically is better for the development of the techniques, the instruments, everything. But it's the thing that you have to be always open and flexible for what all the environment is telling you. But when, for example, like a traditional orchestra such a, with mm -hmm. such a big tradition, the Berlin Philharmonic, play a piece like this week, Mahler Five, mm. and the last person we played it with was Simon, we played it, you know, often mm -hmm. with him, and then before that, 
we played it with a bardo, and, and these conductors make it their own piece. Mm -hmm. when, a, when a new new conductor, you're not new for us, but Mahler fights the mm -hmm. first time you, you did Mahler fight. With, with the orchestra, us. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you f sense when you come in and listen to what they do? Because of the first rehearsal, we played it yeah. through yes. virtually. So do you hear what we do as a tradition? Can you hear that? And do you think, yes. ah, I want to change that, or how can I make that more mine? Completely. It's, it, it's, and, and it takes time, you know. It's like, <laughs> it's like when you start to drive. You start to learn. You know, it takes time. You the first, the first time you will not go like, and, and you will understand everything. In the case of the art, it's the same, but it's more deep. You know, it's deeper because you have an orchestra that even you can see rehearsals of Karajan in videos of Mahler Five. This was one of the only Mahler symphonies that he was conducting, and you see this all, you know, in the seventies orchestra, you know, Berlin Philharmonic and him rehearsing all of these Mahler There symphony. was not a lot of give and take there, huh? It, no, there was no, a no, lot no, of, no. he it told them like what to do. Uh, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you don't listen, yeah. you know. <laughs> it was, but um, at the same time, I grew up, you know, also being close to Claudio, very close to Claudio, to Simon, to listen to them. Even uh, Mahler Five was, was, was a piece that I worked with Claudio you know, in, with a youth orchestra in Venezuela, with the Bolivars and all of that. And, um, and also was a piece that I conducted at the uh, Gustav Mahler competition in Bamberg. So it's a piece that is in my blood. I don't like when, when you put a composer that is my composer, because for me, I, I, I love to do all the composers. But of course, something close with Mahler Maybe because Gustav this <laughs> is, the, is, the, is, the, is the, the closer thing. That's a good enough reason. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but coming here and starting Mahler 5, it was like, wow, this is a special moment. Mm. It's unique. But I started to listen, and then we work. But it was a conversation. It was a conversation of, of sharing the knowledge and the experience that each other have, you know. This happened, why I want this tempo like this? Because I don't want to come here and say, well, this softer, this there, and, and nobody, and repeat something that nobody knows what I'm doing. So I say, well, we do this because this, is, this element goes with this, this goes. And I think it was beautiful because it was like, like to come to a beautiful garden and to take care of that garden.